Okay, so there's been another update to the already excellent Lineage OS 18.1, uh, which is basically Android 11 on Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, but as you can see here from the top, it also supports Pi 400 and also the Compute Module 4, which is interesting because I've just recently got one of those. Uh, but also because it lends itself very well to a tablet because Android is first a touch-based operating system. So really good news there. If we go down to the change log, and by the way, thanks to Paulie Pyot for letting me know that there was a new version that had come out. Uh, so if we scroll down, there's loads of information. If you're looking for something or if you're stuck on something, uh, it's all in the blog. Uh, but I have a tutorial on how to install it and the older tutorial works exactly the same for this version. Ah, here we are, here's the change log. So 11.10, uh, which is basically the 11th of October, added support for Vulkan, so this is 3D graphics support, uh, but also update to Mesa 21.1.8, which is also gaming graphics support as well. So that's really good. Uh, update to the Linux kernel, and there's also Android security patches as well. And they've reworked the Bluetooth. I can't remember if I had to, I think I did have trouble with some things on Bluetooth. So the support has been improved on that as well. Now I've covered Lineage OS a lot uh, because it has been one of the better operating systems on Raspberry Pi 4. It definitely adds extra things to the Pi 4 and things you can do with it, especially as a tablet operating system. So I've got several videos on how to install it and how to set it up. The one I used to set this up, uh, and I'm glad nothing's changed, uh, is this video. So how to set up and install Android 11. Uh, that basically gives you all the information you need to set it up, either onto a USB device or an SD card, doesn't matter. It also gives you the instructions on how to install the Google Play Store and everything worked absolutely fine from that video. Uh, there is a link for G Apps, uh, which is, so the latest version of G Apps is in here. Uh, there you go, so this download, and that worked absolutely fine for me. I've also got a load of videos showing how gaming is on this, so games test on Android 11, and that goes through a load of different games that you can try and play on it. I'll be trying some, and some emulators and some video in a minute. So for this video, I've installed it onto an SD card, and I'm using my wireless Xbox 360 adapter to be able to use it, and also just an ordinary mouse and keyboard. And just for a change, I normally use my 8 gig passively cooled Pi. I'm using a 4 gig Pi in the official Raspberry Pi case with a Pi Maroni fan shim inside it. So let's press space to unlock and tap the pin in. And you can see that it comes in nice and quickly. So I managed to get Netflix on this, uh, uh, but Netflix wasn't in the Google Play Store. So I showed in my previous video how to install the Google Play Store. Um, but Netflix doesn't show up in the Google Play Store. And if I show you what happens, uh, Basically, if I type in Netflix, you can see that it just doesn't come up. Other things come up and other things are available and Amazon Prime comes up in the Google Play Store, uh, but for some reason Netflix doesn't. And I've also looked this up and Lineage OS, uh, it doesn't come up with an option for Netflix. So what I did was installed the APK Mirror and that is available on the Play Store. So if you type in APK Mirror, uh, it comes up as an installer and you can see I've already installed it in the normal way from the Play Store. Once you have that, if you go to the browser and go to apmirror.com uh, and type in Netflix, you'll find loads of different builds. This was the one that I downloaded and uh, it appears to be working fine. So if I click on Netflix, I'm already logged in. So if I click on series, so you can see the last thing I watched was Our Planet. Let's click on that and just play a little bit of it. And the picture quality seems fine. Obviously, I can't keep playing it. Um, it's not, I don't reckon it's 1080, um, but I'm sure this is more to do with the Android apps uh, that run in a lower resolution. But it still looks pretty decent. Uh, and Amazon Prime is the same. In fact, I think Netflix was probably better picture quality than Amazon Prime. So you can see here, if I pick something that is okay to play, There you go. Well, obviously that's the advert bit and I won't play all of that, but it is playing and I have used that and it works fine. Video playback I can show would be YouTube. And the desktop is running at 1080. From a gaming point of view, I'd probably drop it down to 720, but I'm running it at 1080 because obviously it's better for video at the moment. So if I do a search, oh, there you go, leave PSP video HDR, click on that. 
And as you can see, it's looking pretty good. Uh, it does seem to be playing at 1080 and uh, it doesn't seem to be skipping or anything like that. It's, uh, yeah, the video playback quality on Android's been decent for a while on Raspberry Pi. Uh, so that's looking good. So let's come out of that and do a bit of gaming. Uh, now I'm running a 1080 on the desktop at the moment. I'm probably gonna lower the desktop for PPSSPP to see if I can get a bit better performance. But for these games, for these Android games, I'm gonna try it at 1080. So Real Racing 3, I've done videos on this before, comparing it with the four gig and the eight gig. Uh, if I flick my controller, you can see that I'm able to navigate through the menus nicely, nice and fast, everything works pretty well. And here we are, and I think we could all agree that it really does look decent uh, as a game. Uh, it, uh, it plays really well with the controller, the, the handling, just the details, the sound, everything is just really, really good on real racing. And here we are with some other cars on the track as well. So we can see how well it will cope with that. It works with the analog and the digital stick, uh, although it is a bit twitchy on the analog. I haven't tried to adjust anything. Obviously a little bit uh, boisterous through there. But as you can see, it seems to handle this as well. So all of the other cars on the track, uh, all the speed and everything, and it just looks brilliant. Oh, that wasn't good. <laughs> right, let's try something else. So something a little bit more simple, but still decent to play, Jetpack Joyride. It only uses one button for this. So you can use touch, you can use keyboard. And as you can see, everything runs on this exactly as it should. Uh, it's nice and responsive, so you can definitely avoid the things and you don't feel that there's any input lag or anything like that. Right, let's try something else. So the last Android game was Apple Knight, uh, and this is a sort of retro style 2D platformer. Really, really good game. And I think in older versions, this didn't used to run. It's nice when all the controls and everything uh, and all the menus work well without using any touch control or mouse and keyboard. Uh, and this game definitely does all of that. So you can see you've got all the double jump stuff. Quite like that the fighting in this, that the enemies don't die straight away. Uh, they take several hits to, to get them. There you go, so def definitely worth having a look at. It's nice to have some variety on the pipe. Oh. So let's show something else. Uh, I was gonna show Ada 64 because people like to see uh, all the ins and outs of it. This basically tells you the status of everything. Uh, I can go to thermals and as I've been gaming, I can see that I'm running at 47 degrees. I was at, up at 50 degrees before. It's obviously cooling down already being out of that app. So system, Raspberry Pi 4. I'm overclocked to uh, two gigahertz, uh, which is all done through the menu, but it's also all shown in that tutorial before. So this is more just showing uh, that it's been updated, that support has got better on this version. Uh, and I'm running at 1920 by 1080. There is so much information in here. And under devices, it even shows you things like uh, what's connected. So my controller is showing up there, uh, my little USB dongle for the mouse and keyboard. And also multitasking works as well. So you can see here, if I wanna drag with the mouse, all the things that are open, if I go back into that Android video, uh, I'm guessing it probably didn't cache it because it's been doing so much. No, oh, it didn't, didn't take long though, did it? And then go back into multitask. And I can press left and right on the keyboard and go back into a game uh, very, very simply. And it just picks it up straight away. It just multitasks so well. So I was thinking for PPSSPP and Redream, I'd maybe lower the resolution down to 720. It works in 1080, but I think I'll be able to get better performance on PPSSPP and be able to raise one of the levels up a bit if I'm on 720. So we're going to settings, system, advanced. There's a dedicated section at the bottom here for Raspberry Pi, you can see there's a Raspberry next to it. I'm putting my audio through the three and a half mil jack. That's because when I'm screen capturing, I want it to be able to come through the speaker, which just makes it easier for me doing a video. Display resolution, uh, and all the overclock settings are in here as well. You can see it says two gigahertz. That's as high as you can go in this. There may be a way of getting it higher. 
So let's drop that down to 720. And I'll restart that. So if I press function and hold F5, you get this menu and then I can restart and I want to restart the system, not recovery. Okay, so here it is running in 720. Actually, Redream probably didn't need it. Redream tends to run really well at 1080 anyway, which is the Dreamcast emulator. And I have paid for the premium version on Android, but I don't know how to get it back, um, but it doesn't really matter because this lets you play it anyway. Uh, I've only got one game on here, uh, which I've put in my documents folder. So all the menus are nice and fast. So as you can see, it's looking decent. Oh, I missed the transition there. And it's running pretty fast, happy with that. So let's try a bit of PSP. So PSP, uh, if I go into the settings, so it came default at two times PSP, and it wasn't running well at 1080, but I'm gonna try back to two times PSP. So because the PSP is a very small screen, when you're using it on a big screen, obviously the graphics quality at one times resolution doesn't look very good, but at two times it tends to be much more forgiving. So let's see uh, if we can go back in. So all the audio and everything seems fine, doesn't seem to be skipping. You can see the FPS is going a bit low on the right hand side there, should be at 30 on this. Yeah, I think that's a good combination. So frame skips on one, um, and uh, the game just looks a lot better on two times PSP. Let's just get on the open road and see how well it, it coats with that. Oh, I didn't realize there was a curb there. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's running well at two times PSP. It does run well on Android. You can see him with the cars there and more details going on. It still seems to be, oh, there's not going to be a way out of there, is there? And I think I've got some game saves on here. If I go down and then back, yeah, I've got a save state here. That, so if I load this up, actually, I was going to show this because I was going to show what the difference between one times and two times PSP is. So if I go into menus now, so you can see you can read the writing and it's looking pretty decent. Even the number plate was readable. But if I put it on one times, so one times PSP, so this is the actual resolution the PSP runs at. So you can't read the number plate. Some of the signs are illegible, um, but it, it does work very well even at 1080 on this. It's nice and smooth without frame skip even. So you kind of, um, it's nice that it's so configurable, but I'm gonna put it back on the two times. In fact, let's just show you three times just to show you how good it can look. Obviously on a much more powerful machine, you can go right up to eight times, which is ridiculous. So three times, I'm not sure if it'll even run at. Yeah, it looks nice though. Now you can see it's already, it's very jerky. So it's just getting that right balance, but I think running it at 720 um, with the two times PSP seems to be pretty decent for me. So back down to two times. There are loads of more settings on here, so it probably pays to play around with it. I think I've had better performance, and actually with higher overclocks and on my eight gig Pi in other videos I've done this. But let's go back. Yeah, that's, that feels much more playable. Uh, it's skipping a little bit, but it's, it's not to the point where it's not enjoyable to play. Obviously on certain missions, maybe you're gonna drop it down to one times PSP, so you're getting uh, better performance overall. But I think overall, I'm happy with that. See so even the detail on the fence there and stuff like that. It is pretty decent. I've just remembered I meant to show Vulcan on PSP to see if that works uh, because it's configurable on that. Uh, now obviously some games just use Vulcan anyway, that's their default setting. If they detect it, they'll launch with it. And there is a list online of all the games you can get that are Vulcan supported. But just to show you a uh, touch screen, so if I drag up from the bottom, uh, if I drag, you can see the notification center there. Uh, everything is, is working really nicely. Uh, so if I was to go into, say for instance, settings, 
uh, I can flick through the settings, system, advanced, uh, just, just works exactly as it should and I guess if I pick a game that's touch uh, then obviously this will work with the touch screen controls as well even though I've got a control although my controller is timed out uh, if you don't use it it times out here we go so this would be touch anywhere on the screen just as if you were using it on a phone and as you can see it's working absolutely fine if I slide down from the top and click home it, it just is very, very nice for a touchscreen display. And all I'm using for this is a USB-A to C cable, which supplies the touch support. Uh, and then this is just an ordinary USB-C to power the monitor. And then this is just an HDMI cable coming from the Pi. But I also have another video of this working as a tablet, so you can use it with a battery. Uh, but I'll put a link in the description to that. So last up, back in PSP, uh, I was going to show that it has a Vulkan setting. So you can see here, backend, OpenGL. Uh, there is a Vulkan option here, and you can select that, and yes to restart. But at the last time I tried it, it seemed to quit out. Uh, so let's start that up. And we go back into settings. Yeah, it still says OpenGL. Look. So it doesn't seem to stay. I wonder if I change in GPU back end. So if I say no to this, oh no, it will only do it if I say yes. And yes. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't restart the app. I'll give it a bit just to see if it restarts on its own, but it doesn't look like it's going to restart the app. And then when you go back in... Oh, it doesn't start at all. There we go. That's back in. And settings. Yeah, so um, there is a list of games that are on Android that support Vulkan. Um, so have a look at that if you want to try out Vulkan. Uh, obviously the better driver support is in here anyway for normal games and I do feel that it's it's more compatible. There are some games that didn't launch that do launch now um, and, uh, and overall the performance of this has been great. So thanks very much to Consta Kang and uh, everybody else involved. They're doing a great job on this. It is, it is a really fun operating system to use on a Raspberry Pi. I need to try it on the Compute Module 4 and see how well it runs on that. Anyway, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.